Hello, this is Dr. Kevin Kirby. I'm going to be discussing today modern biomechanics and engineering terminology for the podiatrist and specifically be talking about forces and moments. I've been lecturing nationally and internationally on biomechanics topics for the foot and low extremity for the past 30 years in addition to having a private practice in Sacramento, California also for the past 30 years. Biomechanical knowledge is important for podiatrists, I hope you all know. And why? Because the foot is the prime weight-bearing organ for the bipedal human. The foot allows us to walk, to stand, to push and pull, to balance, to run, to jump, and to hop. And these normal foot movements and joint positions involve a delicate balance between the internal forces from the bones, the tendons, the ligaments, the muscles, and the small muscles in our foot, along with the external forces from ground reaction force and also the force of the shoe on our feet. So that even small alterations in structure of the foot, such as from foot surgery or from a torn ligament or torn tendon or broken bone, may significantly alter joint position and also the function of the foot and lower extremity that will affect our daily weight-bearing activities and also possibly our foot comfort. Let's look first at a few of the simple definitions we must understand. First of all, mechanics. Mechanics is defined as a branch of physics that is concerned with the motion and deformation of bodies that are acted on by mechanical disturbances we call forces. And biomechanics is the science that examines these forces acting upon and within a biological structure and the effects produced by such forces. So that in podiatric biomechanics, where we're looking at the biomechanics of the foot and lower extremity, we're interested in the forces acting upon and within the foot and lower extremity and the effects produced by these forces, whether they are external or external forces. A force, put quite simply, is a mechanical disturbance or load. Force is also considered to be the action of one object on another. So that when a force is applied to the object, it can cause the object to either move and or to deform. It can also cause an object to decelerate, accelerate, or force can be used to stabilize an object. In honor of Sir Isaac Newton, force is now measured by the international biomechanics community in a unit called the Newton. One pound equals approximately four and a half Newtons, whereas one Newton is going to equal approximately one quarter pound. There's four components of a force. Magnitude, which is the quantity or amount of force. Line of action, which is line along which the force acts direction, which is the direction the force acts, and the point of application of the force. This is actually the point on the object where the force is acting. So that in this example, where we have a runner hitting the posterior aspect, posterior lateral aspect of the shoe heel at ground contact, at his, when his heel initially hits the ground in a rear foot striking runner, we have the magnitude of ground reaction force, the line of action, which is line at axelon, the direction, which is upward, and also the point of application, which is on the posterior lateral corner of the heel. The point of application is important because this will determine where along the shoe heel, if it hits, will determine the forces acting within the foot as a result of those forces. While as a force is a linear quantity, a moment, or moment of force, or torque, is a rotational force. Moments calculated, m, by the formula m equals f times d, whereas f is the magnitude of the force, d is the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the axon rotation, or we call a lever arm, or otherwise known as a moment arm, so that in the wrench that we're looking above at, we have a force pointing downward from the hand, acting over a distance d, from the point of application of force to the center of rotation at the center of the bolt head. 
that distance d is the moment arm, so force times d, the moment arm, is going to give us the moment. With larger forces and larger moment arms, or longer moment arms, we produce increased moments. Smaller forces and smaller moment arms are going to be producing smaller moments. Moment is measured as a newton meter. In the example of ex when we have a patient laying on the table with their tibia horizontal to the table, and we have our force from our hand pushing upwards on the forefoot to dorsiflex the ankle, we can actually calculate the moment. In this example, we have the compression force from the hand pushing with 50 newtons of force. We have the force acting along a line of action. And here we have the ankle joint axis. We can calculate the distance, perpendicular distance, of the force, line of action of the force, to the ankle joint axis as being 12 centimeters. So that 50 newtons times 12 centimeters is going to give us our moment. So 50 newtons times 0.12 meters equals 6.0 newton meters of moment. So the compression force from our hand can be used along with the distance from the line of force from our hand to the ankle joint to calculate ankle joint moments. When we have a head osteotomy versus a base wedge osteotomy for bunion surgery, we have two different moment arms set up. First of all, let's look at the head osteotomy. These are illustrations from Josh Gerbert's book on bunion surgery. In a head osteotomy, the osteotomy is performed at the metatarsal neck, and this produces a small angular correction for the intermetatarsal angle. Whereas in the base wedge osteotomy, we have the osteotomy performed at the metatarsal base, which a, allows us a larger intermetatarsal angular correction to occur. So the advantage of this base wedge osteotomy is that having a longer distance from the osteotomy to the metatarsal, this allows us to swing the intermetatarsal angle over further with a smaller cut, and so we have a larger potential for intermetatarsal angle correction. The problem is that for moments, a base wedge osteotomy has a longer moment arm for ground reaction force. So on the right here, we have a base wedge osteotomy with a screw fixation at the base. Ground reaction force acting at the head can produce, will produce a 30, meter, 30, 30 millimeter moment arm, whereas at a head osteotomy, will only produce a 5 millimeter moment arm. So the base wedge osteotomy has the advantage of being able to do larger angular corrections, but also has a significant disadvantage of producing six times of an increase in dorsiflexion moment arm for ground reaction force to cause a rotational force or moment at the osteotomy site and this is going to increase the stress on the fixation device and make the base wedge osteotomy more likely to pull out the screw or the fixation device in the immediate post-operative period and this is one of the reasons that we will tend to non-weight bear patients who have base wedge osteotomies or proximal osteotomies whereas we're going to be weight-bearing patients who have head osteotomies right away after surgery. Thanks for your attention and I hope you enjoyed my short discussion on the biomechanics of forces and moments and how it applies to the podiatric physician.